really appreciate the fact, David and, and team, that you gave uh, my mate John Ruddick's uh, book, uh, you know, Make the Liberal Party Great Again, uh, an opportunity. And I'm, I'm hesitating part because I appreciate there are people of good faith making a great contribution from other political parties here um, today. But I think Keith's point is right. You know, what we find is that the problem is not primarily the assault from the left, but it is the sellout from so-called centre-right conservative politicians who actually have got no convictions about anything. And we just wound up with a whole generation of careerist politicians who just see the world in terms of their position in the hierarchy uh, and their turn according to some uh, gender quota, uh, explicit or, or implicit. And, uh, or whatever other quote you want. Um, the reason I am attracted to the Radic thesis, which is, I think, applicable to other political parties beyond the Liberal Party, potentially, is Radic is saying this whole generation of careerist politicians who are just suckets for the latest bureaucrat to walk through the door with an expert study, um, with the only way to flush them out is to take a Liberal Party, which currently, nationally, the total membership of the Liberal Party nationally is about 50,000, only 10,000 in New South Wales, so smaller than the size of most AFL football clubs. Um, if we could put 300,000 Australians of, you know, who actually have had some life experience, who have been out on a farm, who have rolled up their sleeves, who know what it means to take risk in the private sector. Um, if we could put 300,000 in uh, by offering them the chance to have a direct say, and obviously David Flint is one of Australia's greatest campaigners for democratic reform, and I am, you know, later to the party. But I just think if you give people a motive to join a political party, which is the right to participate in pre-selection for every member of parliament, and indeed the book is arguing for the leader of the party, um, this is where we have a genuine prospect, and you know, uh, like like uh, Ricardo, uh, I am looking at where we can. What is a plausible part to win? What is the part to roll back? And so I see this move to direct participation in democracy, to building a mass membership Liberal Party where individuals of merit can put themselves forward, male or female, in the knowledge it's a fair contest. It hasn't been stitched up by Michael Fodius. Um, it's a real democracy. Then I think we start getting ourselves in a position to select candidates who have got the ballast uh, to push back instead of, uh, like Gladys, whatever the proposition is, how, you know, where do I roll over? <laughs> no, I'd just like to say on this gender business, this gender equality, I think we've really got to start pushing the look. If, if a woman out there can do a job better than a man, give it to her. This 50-50, this like our police force or army or whatever, is the biggest load of rubbish out. I mean, I'm a butcher by trade, and I've had to lift some pretty heavy weights uh, probably not as big as you, Ricardo. <laughs> but um, heavy weights over my life and all the rest of it. And I'd, uh, yeah, women just can't, they're physically not just built to do these things. No. But you know, we're judges, lawyers, and other jobs, whatever. But we've just got to get back to say, look, the best person for the job. Yes. Forget yes. this crap. Yes. Speak out and just say, look, we've got to forget it. The best person gets the job. Simple as that. <laughs>